Hello, and welcome to the Inside EVs podcast for July the 10th, 2020. This is episode number 14. Today, we'll be talking about the Audi Q4 e-tron Sportback concept debuts, Tesla Cybertruck reservations open up in China, and a mystery Mustang Mach-E race car is spotted hooning. I'm Dominic Yoni, Inside EVs editor and Inside EVs forum moderator. Uh, joining us today, we have Tom Malogny, multiple EV owner and Inside EVs editor. We also have Martin Lee from the EV News Daily podcast, available on all your usual podcast platforms. And of course, we have Kyle Connor from the Out of Spec Motoring and One Lap YouTube channels. And he also puts together the super awesome videos for the new Inside EVs YouTube channel. Go subscribe and tap that bell icon for notifications. So welcome, the gentlemen of the panel and ladies and gentlemen of the audience. Uh, lots to talk about today, but before we get to the big news, uh, what do we have charging up in our driveways? I believe, uh, Tom, this week you have a BMW i something. What do you have? Yeah, I had. I actually just returned it, a uh, 2019 BMW i3 S. I wanted to get a hold of one to do our Inside EV 70 mile range test and also charging tests. Problem is, because it's not a new vehicle, they're not available on any press fleets. So I had to go to BMW of North America and kind of ask for a favor. And it took a while, but they were able to get one for me. And it was actually a 2019, but it only had like 480 miles on it. So it's a brand new car. And there's no difference really in the 2020s and the 2019s. They both have the uh, newer or the latest uh, battery pack, which is a 42.2 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, so I was able to get that thing out on the highway and drive it at a constant 70 miles an hour. And I finished up with uh, 141 miles. Uh, it's EPA range rated at 153 miles per charge. So I came pretty close to the EPA range rating. It was a good day, uh, very hot. It was in the mid 90s. So I had the air conditioning on the whole time, very little wind. Uh, so it was good. It was good range of weather, other than the fact that the AC was cranking for the entire trip, uh, and uh, finished up with a consumption rate of uh, three point six miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, for our European friends, I think that translates to seventeen point two kilowatt hours per hundred uh, kilometers. Uh, so it did okay. I thought it was going to do a little better in my time with my i threes, and I I've owned two i threes. I owned a 2014 with a range extender that had the smaller battery, the, the smallest battery, the 21.6 kilowatt hour battery pack. And then I had a 2018 i3S with the 33.2 kilowatt hour battery pack. I never owned one with this latest, the largest battery pack. Um, and, it, you know, so I, I, I'm fairly experienced driving an i3. And I thought I was going to average a little more than 3.7 or 3.8 at that speed. But, um, wasn't to be. We averaged that. It was going between 3.6 and 3.7 the whole time. And then it just, it, it I ended at 3.6. I think if I drove further, it would have ended at 3.7. It was like right on the edge. My entire drive, it kept bouncing up and down, depending on if I was going up a little bit hill or down a grade a little. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, and that makes sense because it has a, uh, the 42.2 kilowatt hour battery pack usable is a little over 30, I think a little over 39 kilowatt hours. So we do the math. It's right there at 3.3, 3.6, uh, 3.7 uh, at 70 miles an hour. If you're going to finish up with around 141, 142 miles range, probably could have squeezed out another couple miles. I don't drive it till it dies like Kyle does, uh, but I do drive it down to zero. And uh, that's what we finished up with. Little disappointing news on the charging. I like to, after I do the uh, range test, I like to, to record uh, the charging sessions of these cars on um, Electrify America charging stations. I'll set up my camera. I'm already at zero, so it's great. I can plug in and record zero to 80%. But um, I, I had an Electrify America fail. Uh, I plugged in, walked away, and I walked back like uh, 20 minutes later. And I was already being charged idle fees because the station shut off. I didn't get the notification because I'm using my phone to record the session. So oh, no. I'm sure it sent the notification out, but uh, shut off after only five minutes and it was at like 9%. So there blows the uh, charging station test. I, you know, I wasn't going to get out and drive it down to zero again and come back. I just, I didn't have the car enough time. 
I had to head back to BMW. It was a short term lease. So unfortunately, I don't have the, uh, the, the, the zero to 80 percent recording like I like to do. Right. About, about how long would you, do you think it would have taken to go zero to 80 percent under normal circumstances? Yeah, I'm pretty sure BMW says 42 minutes because it, it minutes. accepts uh, up to 50 kilowatts and uh, the IP will get pretty close to that 47, 48 kilowatts. So I, I think 42 minutes, um, zero to 80 percent is what BMW um, claims on the on this, the new battery pack. Unfortunately, I, I like I said, I hadn't I had known one. So I, I don't know. Uh, I know on the my previous one, it was it was quicker because the battery pack was smaller. But uh uh, you know, I, uh, so I, 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 I called Electrify America, I gave them a, a piece of my mind and, uh, uh I think they're yeah. going to be getting back to me at some point soon. Is that the same size pack in the mini? No, the mini is much smaller. The mini oh. is, 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 uh, uh, a little bit larger than the previous generation I threes. The minis, I think is 35.5, right, Kyle? Oh, Okay. And, and the previous generation I3 was 33.2. Uh, and they use different cells. So it's, it's you know, it's totally different. Wow. That's interesting. I didn't know whether there's any parallels we could have drawn between them, but uh, yeah. but no, no chance. Yeah, yeah. no, it's a, it's a different battery pack. I know a lot of people assume that, but a lot of the power electronics in the car, the motor and everything is, has been shared, but they, they did have to, um, like, you know, totally redesign the battery pack because... This was, you know, it's, it's for a multi-platform, the Mini. It, it, it's the same platform for the, the, the uh, gas version. So they kind of have to stuff batteries wherever they can put them. And uh, it's a totally different, uh, you know, platform. Interesting that the uh, the battery size is like doubled basically the, over the life of the i3, though. It was like 21 kilowatt hours, you said before? Yeah, 21.6 was the first one. Right. The original i3. And now we're, we're up to 42 um, you know, point two. So yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of people throw a lot of hate towards the I3, uh, you know, and uh, I mean, I understand it's super unconventional, the yeah. styling and also the way the doors open up, but I really love the I3s. I, I, you know, if it wasn't so expensive, I'd have another one now. It's a great runaround car. I actually enjoy driving it more than my model three. It's right. a great, little run around, zip into New York City, park the thing, come back. Uh, you know, I, I like the high seating position. It's all glass around. We could see every, you know, from every angle. Um, we don't have kids, so the back seat, the, the coach doors isn't a problem. Uh, it, it's just, I, I love that car. I, I sitting, sitting in it and doing this range test, I was like, damn, I ought to go get another one. I, I, I miss it. Well, they could use some sales, I believe. I, I believe their sales are down quite a bit this year. Yeah, it's like down like 85% in the U.S., but that's part of the reason is they're not stocking the cars anymore. You have right. to order one if you want to get one. And It's, a, it's that, a supply. They're pretty popular in Europe, right? They still are, yeah. I mean, up until this year, every year the i3 was made, it sold more than the previous year, globally at least, not in any one particular market. So, I mean, that that that's that tells a lot that the vehicle's been out since, since, since late 2013 in Europe. And every year sales increased. Um, so, you know, it, 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 people have, you know, it, it's not a, the total failure that it seems like it gets painted as in right. a lot of, you know, articles from different journalists that, you know, it was a flop and it's why, it's why BMW pulled back on their electrification plans. You know, um, it, it's unfortunate because I, I think it gets a bad rap. It's, it's a, it's a really cool, fun to drive electric car. Yes, it, it's a very poor value proposition because BMW did everything completely out of the box with that car, with carbon fiber, reinforced plastic, you know, used all these materials that they've never used before. It, it, it ended up being a very expensive car to make. And BMW promised their shareholders, we will not sell this car at a loss, which is why it's a $50,000 car, you know, and uh, it's a tough value proposition at that price. Yeah, sure is, man. I, I'd have a hard time shelling out that kind of money. I, and I like the way it looks too. I love the glass, that glass back, and and you know it's kind of narrow and yeah, it's a pretty nice little car. So, Kyle, what are you driving this week? Well, we have an i3 as well. On the topic, I think a used i3 makes a lot of sense, at least here in the U.S. You yes. can pick them up for ten grand. There's some good deals uh, in there. I almost bought one. Yeah, I mean it's kind of hard not to for ten or twelve thousand dollars. How much lower is it really going to go? The the older Leafs are definitely worth less 
So they'll always be worth less. The i3 is is a great car. We use it to shuttle the dogs around town. Like Tom was saying, it's a great car just to rip around in. So we, we're really pleased with ours. It's the third one in our family. It's the second one that I've had. So it's a really awesome car. But um, to your to your question, Dom, we are on a big road trip. And we started this past Monday. It's day five today. And uh, day five, basically what we had done is we drove from North Carolina down here to Florida. Uh, and then we sat on the beach for the last four days. Nice. <laughs> and so this makes it day five of our road trip. However, um, <laughs> while I was here, I was able to do some Model 3 Standard Plus tests. Uh, which was pretty good because that's what my mother drives and there's a version three supercharger not by. So I filmed a zero to 100% version three charging curve. Oh, nice. Um, can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Or? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. It's uh, you know, 170 kilowatt peak. Uh, actually it peaked briefly at 172 kilowatt, which is very good. Um, and it seems to pull quite hard all the way up to 50%, 50% still right around a hundred kilowatt. So it's really a, a great uh, charging curve, especially compared to the long range packs. Uh, the long range packs just got a new software update that I think makes them charge more aggressively since Tom did his test. So I'm going to try that out on this trip as well. And that, that's on a V3 charger? Yeah, the, v, the V2 can only output 150 kilowatt peak. So this can do 250 per post, but the standard pluses are limited at 170. Right. Nice, not bad. And so uh, I guess you're going to head up. Uh, I'm in North Florida, so and you, I guess I'll be seeing you tomorrow. And we got some shenanigans lined up for uh, for the weekend. That's right. Yeah. So we have uh, we we're in the midst of packing the car, but as soon as we're off the podcast, we're going to continue and uh, head out and head up towards your way in uh, Northern Florida. We have a campsite booked tonight where we're going to try all the gear for the first time. So we, I'd like to get there while it's light out so we can see how to set everything up. You're not an experienced uh, camper, Carl. You're not, not pitched the tent no. uh, too many times before. No, the, the first time I think I've ever pitched a tent in my life was just a <laughs> couple of days ago in my parents' living room here. What right. <laughs> could possibly go wrong? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have a Twitter, a video on our Twitter, on Out of Specs Twitter. You got to go see it, where we walk through that. It fills up the entire condo, uh, so it's pretty crazy. Oh, I need but, to see that. But um, yeah, so the the plan for this trip is is it's going to be you know anywhere between four and eight weeks, uh, maybe longer, maybe less, where we just live out of the uh, Model Three as much as we can. And there's your tent on the screen for people who. There's uh, the tent on the screen. Oh, it was a nice condom too. Oh, Jeez, my goodness. That is. Well, sweet. I mean, it's going to be fine. I mean, that's not like a massive, <laughs> oh, massive that, tent to build for the first that, time. That is. Well, it's massive. actually um, it, it, all the walls pop out, so right, okay. there's no no poles. It's really right. easy to get up and going. It only takes about. I think we we did it in under a minute. Wow. Oh, that's what, but you, you go on. What, what about putting it all back together again? Yeah, that took about two minutes, but still okay, not, that's bad. not bad. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's not bad. You, you can sleep in the car if it goes wrong, but the car's probably full of all your gear. And, and dogs. Oh, and oh, the dogs, yeah. right? Yeah. You have dog, yeah, dog, mode. You dog mode is on. Wow. Yeah. So you need a big you need a big tent. Hey, did what you bring we really need is a is a Tesla semi for this trip, but we're squeezing right. it all into a model three. You should see just every cubby hole. Every inch of space is just completely sucked up. We have the big box on the roof now that, you know, we had to stand on to close. So it's, we're jam packed. So if I race you tomorrow, my uh, 2015 Spark EV, I might have a chance. Is that what you're saying? I, I, I think that's going to be the funny thing. Like uh, here's a model three loaded to way more weight than what is ever considered <laughs> <loaded>. safe. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and can we, uh, can we keep up with your spark? Hmm. Should be interesting. We'll have to I do a. Something. It, it won't be a competition. I'll still blow you away, but I'll put it in chill mode. And make it. Well, look maybe we'll maybe we'll <laughs> do a salam or something. Is what we have to do some. Right. The, we should do the chill mode thing because Tom wasn't it the Mini SE that was the car right that was identical to the Model Three performance in chill mode in acceleration. We drag raced and it was almost. I mean, the the Mini actually jumped the line on on the Model Three. So we, I got a couple feet in front of them, and then it was like dead even the whole the whole way down the track. It was it was pretty cool. So yeah, um, I wonder how the Spark would do against the Mini. Well, uh, the Spark's a quick car, so Spark's really fast. Yeah, uh, that would be that would be an interesting. That'd be a real interesting race. What's the zero to sixty on the on the Mini again? 
uh, not good. <laughs> like yeah, more than slow. eight seconds? I, no, I, 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 I think it was right around seven, right? Yeah, okay. seven, something that's like, like that. Like, that's like the Spark EV around there, yeah. around 7.2. Well, we're doing a chill mode drag race again. All right, that sounds good. I'll have to find a parking lot. Right, just a, a piece of closed road or something, you know. <laughs> sure. All right. Well, let's get on to some stories. And uh, we're starting today off with the the debut of the Audi Q4 e-tron concept. Uh, no, e-tron sportback concept. We've already seen the the uh, Audi Q4 e-tron uh, concept. And now this is the sportback vision, the version. And... Uh, it's also built on the the Volkswagen uh, MEB platform, and like its uh, long roof sister, it has a an eighty two kilowatt hour battery, and is given a two hundred and eighty mile WLTP range. Uh, charging max is one hundred and twenty five kilowatts, and it, so it takes about thirty minutes to go from zero to eighty percent, and it's all wheel drive. And do we have a pick that we can throw up there, Martin, for the, for yeah, the viewers? Just bring this up so you can see it's sport oh, yeah. back there in you go. all its glory. Oh. Kyle will hate it because it's not dog friendly. Right. Yes. <laughs> just take it, it looks nice. Just it looks, it. it looks, I mean, it's, it's called the concept, but it's about as production ready as, well, it, it's just, it just looks like it's ready to go. And, right. uh, you know, they've got form as in they've made the Audi 50 and the 55 sport back. So, right. Uh, and you know it's not that hard to top the end of a of a car off. So well, it's it's a, it's a concept, but it looks look it looks like oven ready. It's it's good to go. It's amazing that this thing. So this gets two hundred and eighty miles of range WLTP. Uh, so more than the original. Uh, what is it? Fifty five Etron fifty five. Mm. Uh, but it's like thirty thousand dollars cheaper. Yeah, and uh, that's just crazy to me. That that kind of money yeah. difference. It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah but the quality is going to yeah. be different. It'll drive right. totally different than the than normal e-tron will. Right. This is basically this is basically a VW i4, but in Audi clothing, yeah. and Audi interior. The right. interior is really nice too, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. like we're saying, so the uh, official production version should uh, should show up. Um, I think late this next late this year or early next year. And it was next I, year. I think I read next year. Yeah. Right. I don't expect a whole lot of big changes. You know, it should be. You know the interior will be a little more production, but you know it's it's probably very close to what we're seeing here now, right? Doesn't that interior look like BMW i interior? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, because really, it's got these long lines that run. Yeah, it looks like a mixture between the 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 i four and the and the i eight. Actually, it, it re really yeah, just changed the Audi logo to BMW. No one would know. Really, to me, <laughs> when I looked at it, I was like, am I looking at a BMW i? I mean, I like it, and I, I like this vehicle. I, I like the, the, the small crossover. And to put into perspective, this is about half a foot shorter than, say, a Model Y or a Mustang Mach-E. So it's a little more compact than, than those crossovers. And to me, that's a sweet spot for me. I don't need a big vehicle. As I mentioned earlier, mm. my wife and I don't have kids, so we don't need a huge back seat. But it, it's the hatchback that, that's going to have a decent amount of space back there. And um, I like this. I like this vehicle. That, that would be on my hit list if it were to be available. Yeah, so you good, think it's like good battery a, size. So you think it's like a little smaller than the Model Y? It's about six inches. I looked it up. Yeah, shorter than the Model Y. Okay. Yeah, it just and it, it starts in, in that territory of actually a car that we're going to mention next because I've seen the running order, but it it sits in that territory. Oh, Polestar Two as well. That's a uh, you know over here, uh, the Polestar Two splits with well, the Model Three actually because we can't buy the Model Y yet. There's no right-hand drive versions. Uh, but again, this will probably it will probably split some Model Y buyers. Uh, maybe uh, maybe would it come in cheaper than the Model Y? performance maybe or maybe not actually but you know it's it, it should be cheaper than the model y performance i think should be but it'll I mean, be more expensive than the all-wheel drive long range the, uh, i'll try and get my models correct so again it, uh, but it'll be you know it's going to lose the uh the not to 60 battle with tesla because everything does um and if you are preoccupied with those things then you know, it's not gonna it's never gonna win those battles because nothing does right. um but do, do, how quick do you want to go like well this one does a 0 to 60 in about 3 6.3 seconds so you know it, it's not dog slow but it's not you know it's not a race car but it, it's a crossover it's plenty. we'll see an s version of this knowing audi yes right. yeah oh yeah there's right. always an s yes there's yeah. always an s and then maybe if we're lucky we'll get an rs 
which means that, uh, you know, I think we're going to see the same product trend that we've seen from their cars for years and with the e-tron now, where we'll get the slow, basic, everyday one that's nice and mm. comfortable, and then they'll launch the one that you really want later on. It's yeah. like opposite of what Tesla does when they release a performance version. It's kind of first, yeah, higher right. trims. Well, so, the yeah. Germans are known to bring performance versions later on. Like the M5 always comes two years after launch. Right. So it's just not uncommon for them to do these types of things. Right. So so, that, so as it stands, it comes with like a, a 200 horsepower in the back motors and then 100 horsepower in the front motor. So that's 301 horsepower altogether, which, you know, it's... Not, not, that's a decent amount, but in today's horsepower crazy world, you know, there's lots of room for improvement. We can see, like we saw the Model Y uh, dyno this week at uh, 500 horsepower. Uh, was I think that was a performance? Was that a performance? The, yes, it was the guys performance. up in Ontario, I believe, did that Mountain Pass performance. Yep. Second yep. on the dyno. Yeah. Right on. Uh, so, anything else we want to say about this thing? Make it. I hope they make it. Uh, make right. it now. <laughs> right. Now they're going to make it. <laughs> make it's it. A, Come on. They've got, they can make it. They know how to make cars. They know how to good cars as well. But uh, so on. speaking speaking of uh, the VW MEB platform vehicles, the, uh, what is it? The Cupra Elborn uh, Seat uh, debuted this week as well. And that's, uh, that's a little hot hatch. Um, now, Seat, if you don't know, is like a Spanish brand. And Cupra is its like performance uh, subdivision under um, the Volkswagen umbrella, hmm. right? Right. And so this is like a basically oh this thing this looks so good. Um, so it's basically like a spicy VW ID three that unfortunately we won't get here either unless they rebadge it and sell it to us as like an Audi or a, or a V. I'm not sure yeah, if they would bring a new it. Golf. Yeah, I mean they. Mm, it's so hard because they, ha they already had the I ID3 that they could send as a Golf, right? Right. I don't know if they would call it ID for the U.S. market. I'm not sure how well that'd go over here. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we're going to get the ID4 as an ID4. But is it officially confirmed as being named ID4? Or are they going to do like a all track name or something like you know, oh, that? Right? <laughs> no, I, I believe it's I, I believe it's ID4. I'm, okay. I'm hoping they don't draw it out like the, like the Audi, but we just did with Audi Q4. Uh, sport right. back e-tron you know it's, it's a lot it's not as bad as some bmws those you need a billboard on the back of the car <laughs> to keep writing right so yeah i just love the way this this thing looks that's why i threw it up in the uh on the list of things to talk about a little bit today it just it's the, the blue on the outside with the um i don't know if that's a satin finish on the paint or not but the copper accents on the wheels and then the details around the, the grill and then it, that carries over on the inside they got that same kind of and I mm. like the, the shape of the seats. It looks so nice. And it's got the flat bottom Good wheel, back. copper accent yeah. on the dash. Wow. You no, know, I reckon this is a, this, I reckon VW's hand was forced on this. And here's my conspiracy theory. This was shown off at the motor show last year as a Seat. So this should right. have been the Seat Elborn. Seat, as Carl said, is the Spanish bit of VW. And right. it is that the cars are sold on price. And, and you, you don't buy a Seat over here in Europe because uh, maybe the Spanish buy them because they're domestic, but you don't buy them because of any other reason apart from it's a pretty good, you get a lot of car for uh, a good price, right? It's a, so it's a value play, basically. That's what the brand stands for. And that's absolutely fine because VW need them in their, uh, in their locker, right? So it's not, it's not mega, mega, it's not uber cheap, but it is it's going to be cheaper. And then when they showed off the Seat Elborn at the, uh, the motor show, I forget which one it was. Uh, it was a day after the ID three and, uh, uh, it actually the styling, everyone raved about the styling more than the ID three. It overshadowed the ID three, which is, you know, yeah. the glory car from VW yeah. and, uh, and it was going to be cheaper. So exactly. So you're getting exactly the same car interior, the same software, architecture the same they'll just sprinkle some say at stuff on top and change the old logo and the same car and it would have had to have been cheaper than the id3 that's not going to work because right. the id3's had a troubled launch as it is so yeah. what do we do actually let's launch cupra the performance bit of say at as its own brand they're also a, 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 a bit that in the press release that most outlets didn't pick up on is cupra are going to build out a dealer network as well for the cupra brand mm. and so 
they, they, they're pushing Cooper hard. Of course, it's performance. They hardcored the styling even more. They, as you, they throw it back up again. Interior, nice. But otherwise, the specs, exactly what you'd get with the ID3. Um, right. The 82 kilowatt hour battery, which is the MEB platform that we just talked about um, on, on the Audi, which is 77 usable. Uh, this would get you 310 miles of range, uh, but so would the ID3. Uh, this will uh, this will get you the same charging speed as the as the ID3. And so, how on earth is VW going to uh, sell ID3s when they've got the say at Elborn potentially nice and <laughs> cheaper? Make it a Cupra, make it performance, right? Even if it's the same price point. But actually, with this, they can sell this for more than the ID3. It's more desirable, right. and they've solved their problems. Um, and then all of a sudden they haven't got, they're not making, they're not cannibalizing themselves. This car will be made alongside the ID3 in exactly the same factory in Germany, even though it's the Spanish brand, this one won't be made in a Spanish factory. It's going to be made alongside the ID3. So the, the only thing that I find dis disappointing about this car is that, you know, okay, so it's being going to be under the, the Cooper umbrella and uh, which is like a, has been traditionally a performance arm of a Seat, but, um, Zero, they didn't even give us zero to sixty time, but they gave us a zero to thirty time. Sus, very yeah. sus. Like, why would you give a north to thirty time, like thirty miles an hour time? It's pointless, absolutely pointless. And that was two point nine seconds, which is, is that all EVs. I don't know. Uh, you know, I can't. 30. I don't know if that's fast or not. I don't go. I don't go to. I don't time zero to thirties. But the only well, reason does that to sixty, so I'd say it's not <laughs> as fast. The only yeah. thing, the only, yeah. The only reason right. you do a not to thirty time is because you don't want to give the not to sixty time. <laughs> exactly. Oh, come on, just don't put anything in. Just keep it a mystery. But yeah, as you say as well, sad that it's not going to be coming to the U.S. market because I don't know. They VW say they can't sell cars in that market, and maybe they're right. Um, it's uh, tough. I, 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 I mean, sedans. Yeah, I mean, in the U.S., uh, the, the, you know, you drive around and you you don't see sedans anymore. New, you like, you no. know, like for the launch of the F thirty three series, which is the last generation, they were everywhere. Every street corner had a three series. Now it's all X threes everywhere. We don't, I don't see any new three series. I've seen five, and they've been out two years. Yeah. Just just on on the theme of uh, sedans going away, uh, GM uh, ended this. Was the, not the Sonic. What's the uh, was it the Sonic? They cut. What's that mid-sized sedan GM yeah, had? Yeah, they, they, they stopped the Sonic production Sonic. and okay. they're going to electrify the factory. So now there's... So they've they made a Sonic uh, up to yeah. this point? Uh, yeah. Who knew? Yeah, yeah they were still <laughs> making them. No I yeah. thought that was just a little garbage trash can people drove around for like 10 years ago. Right. Well, no, yeah. we were, I was in the factory this uh, earlier this year and they were making them alongside the uh, the Bolt EV. Yeah. Wow. In, the same, in the same factory. So, But that leaves... So the only sedans that GM makes, we need a sound trom sad trombone sound here, is the uh, the, sh the Spark and not the electric version, the the sad gasoline version, and the Malibu, which is like a rental car queen or whatever. But yeah. yeah. Well, so they bought it's a, it's the so two. Ford and GM both announced that they were getting out of the sedan business. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Know. Ford's also. Nothing. Yeah, that's that's nothing new. You know, the, the, I mean, they both gave us their roadmap and said, you know, in three or four years, we're, we're, we're out of the sedan business. It's all crossovers, SUVs and trucks. So, you know, right. it shouldn't be surprising. Uh, well, you know, the, the, they, they crunch the numbers. They see that people aren't buying these vehicles anymore. Look at parking lots. Now, all you see are, are crossovers and SUVs. Right. So, you know, it's, it'd be interesting actually if it, if it can make a comeback, you know, uh, especially in, in the EV space, because it is, Make, having a crossover uh, like a high riding vehicle makes it harder to get range. You know, you're just eating up batteries from nothing. So, you know, there's still maybe there's still like a, a market segment waiting for a company like like Lucid. Their their car, the Air is kind of a low roof sedan, mm. right? Yeah, but you yeah. know, we saw this a great success with Model Three being a sedan, but That's it's true. really one of the only successful sedans. But now that Model Y is here, right. why would you ever buy a Model Three? That is true. Performance that, handling, right? It, it handles better than you know. It I mean, it, they drive the same. Exactly I mean, the I've same? Had both, Yeah, I've had both on track. You okay. get out of one and into the other, and you do not give up anything in Model Y. And and this is you know full sideways tire smoking, right, right. You know, really good chassis control on so both you get the cars. Same, you get the same lap times. Uh, I don't think I ran both on the same tires. I also okay. haven't timed a Model Y lap, but okay. uh, I. I keep meaning to do a Model Y for one lap, but I just haven't yet. Um, right. 
But I will say like, now that Model Y is here, right? It's a better car. It gets pretty much the same range. You're giving up 10 miles, Tom, 15 yeah, miles, something like that's this. That's about it. Yeah, and the, the price is it's within three or four thousand dollars for the comp, you know, for the same trim. Now we don't have the lower trims of Model Y yet, uh, but when those do come, I, I don't see like right now you buy a Model 3 standard plus because it's a huge price delta to a Model Y. But if you're getting a long range car, you get a Model Y. Now, I agree. After I mean, I own a Model Three, and after driving the uh, the Y for a while, doing my range tests, you know, and I look got out of it and said, you know what, I'd if this were available last year when I got my three, I'd probably have gotten this. Although I will say, I I like the way the three looks better. Um, yeah. You know, it just the the Y just I don't know the proportions just don't seem right to me visually. Um, yeah, it looks but a little I would, I would give that up for the ex the added utility of having that extra space and the hatchback uh, for not much more money. Actually, here in New Jersey, it would actually cost me less now because since I bought my Model Three, we started this new state rebate where I'd get five thousand dollars off the purchase of a Y. So. I'd actually, I could actually buy one now for less than what I paid for my three, similarly spec. So, um, yeah, I would, I'd probably have a Y if, if, uh, if it were available when I got my three. Tom, I have uh, something I wanted to bring up on the show. I found a brand new iPace. You, uh, did you run the story? Someone ran the story on Inside EVs about twenty thousand dollars off. Oh yes, I yeah. saw it run. I didn't run the story, but I okay. looked it up, and I even followed the link to that. Uh, to the eye paste, yeah, right. It, like so it was like a get, demo, though, right? Because it had like three thousand miles, right? Yeah, it's three or four thousand miles. But this particular eye paste was forty thousand dollars off ah. for the tax credit and before Tom's five thousand dollar credit. So why don't you just go and get a free eye paste, Tom? I well, I couldn't. <laughs> that was out of state. It, you have to buy it from a dealer in New Jersey and oh, register no it here in New Jersey. So I, I wouldn't register. qualify for that. But yeah, I looked at. I mean, the sticker was like eighty-five. I think eighty-five, and it was forty-eight before the tax credit. Man, oh my! A- I mean, that's ridiculous. I, mean, I don't know how. You, like we, I honestly was like, let's go trade in Alyssa's i three, <laughs> right? But it wouldn't make it to Florida where we got to trade it in. Yeah, that's so, that's the problem. It's a little it's a little hobbled with the range and the. Char- charging speed and everything. Yeah, well, I I guess we could have run her car on gas, but you know, I'm going right yeah. by that dealer today, so I was thinking about stopping in to just look at it. Right. Yeah, just to see it's in in one piece and yeah, and just to exists. see and and maybe make an offer. I don't know. Oh, wow. So, and who would have thought this whole converse, this whole digression came from the Sonic? We have a lot to be grateful for. That, <laughs> <laughs> that little car going away. It was an the interesting discussion. The Sonic has ever done. Yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think I rented one of those there a few years back. It was okay. It was, yeah. yeah I, I don't, know, I, I don't know if we actually said at the beginning of that, of the digression, it's going because they need room for the Bolt EUV. That's right. Didn't, didn't say that, but that's, that's oh, why yeah. they're, they're using that line for the EUV. Right. So would you yeah. buy the Bolt EUV over the Bolt EV? Oh man. I saw them both side by side and man, it was kind of hard to see the difference actually, to be, to be really honest. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. They look the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I forget. I mean, I know there's some like the dimensional differences, but you know, and they they didn't this inside the EUV either. I don't think so. I didn't sit in that. I just I sat in the refreshed uh, Bolt EV, which you know I thought was such a huge improvement. But yeah, and it looks and better. It, from needs, the it needs it. The, the, oh, the one thing I mean, I've driven so many bolts, and I love it as a, as an EV. I mean, they they did a great job with it. I love the regenerative braking system. I still say it's the best of any electric vehicle on the market today, but I just couldn't bring myself to buy one because I just don't like the interior. Right. It's so plasticky and cheap. Um, I mean, I love the, the, the controls and, and, and the, 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 the infotainment system, the information that they give you. GM, GM nailed it. They did so much right with that car. Right. But I just, the seats are terrible. I have a bad back. I can't sit in one for more than a half an hour without having a, my, my back bother me. They're so narrow, unsupportive, and the interior, the the dashboard, that white plastic they have. Every time I look at it, I just see like airport bathroom. And <laughs> like, I just can't get beyond that. It just like I, I don't know what they did with that. So I 
really looking forward to the uh, the the bolt interior refresh. Well, that's that's well, that's going going away, and you'll have some nice nice soft touch materials across the dash, and nice and dark, not hard plastic, and yeah. yeah. It needs so, something. So, Martin, want to roll us some tape? Oh, go on. Should we have a look at uh, a video that hit the uh, hit the internet uh, this week, and then we'll get into what it's all about. Let's uh, have a look from our, our our sister site, Motor One. Okay. So we're looking for Sasquatch. Is that what's going on? <laughs> so for those listening on the the audio podcast, this is a very shaky piece of camera phone footage shot through about three rows of trees it's out of focus and uh it's um it's meant to look like someone has kind of sneaked into a a test track somewhere and they are filming a crazy stripped out car doing donuts and wrecking the tires you get a little that's sound. what we're looking at you get a little and sound there I don't think I can bring the sound through. I didn't uh, get that one sorted before the oh, podcast, okay. but uh, okay. uh, and then it stops, right? Really conveniently in a place where uh, you get a great view of it between the trees. Who would have thought? I'm amazed, amazed, <laughs> amazed. I I'm almost um, think it was staged. What luck! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then the car sits there doing nothing in in clear vision. Uh, then really? it speeds off again in just a moment, does some more donuts. Uh, and I didn't, I mean, I wouldn't have known what this car, I don't know this car well enough to know what it is because it's got the front ripped off and it's got the rear ripped off and just massive fans. Um, and I, I'm just not familiar enough with the shape of this uh, of this body to instantly right. know what, if I hadn't been told what it is, but I'm sure you're about to tell us. Well, you, as you can see, it's doing donuts here, and there's like billows of smoke coming from all four tires. And when it sh shows that when it had the back view, that you could see like there's like three, I think three huge fans across the back. But if you look inside, you can see there's like typical kind of race car roll cage thing going on for structural support. So it's obviously a race car. And uh, I think Jalopnik reported on this yesterday. But they broke the story, and they mentioned that you know it's a it's a Mustang Mach E, Ford Mustang Mach E. And it's, it's really hard to tell, like, it, as you said, because there's like nothing on the front. Uh, there, it's all it's all open. You, you can't really see. There's a great shot. I've, we have some stills there as well where um, you can see the like the front steering arms, you know, as it's, it's coming around for a, a spin around. But so we have a little bit of an inside scoop on this because <laughs> We, yeah, we I think know we what shouldn't, it is, uh, but we can't we say anything about it because some of us are under well, uh, non non disclosure agreements. No, but, well, uh, no, I think I think we can say you know obviously this is our track. You know, if, right. if anyone's seen any of our original Inside EVs content, we film all of our car reviews, drag races, tests at this particular facility, our right. facility. This is so, the, the North Carolina Center for Automotive Research, or NCAR, or better known as the Auto Spec. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Auto Spec track, track and, is easier to remember than North Carolina Center for Automotive Research, sure. which is why we call it the Auto Spec Track. Right. Uh, but yeah, NC Car Works as well. Um, yeah, it's a really cool car. It seemingly uh, seems to be very fast. Lots of donuts, lots of tire smoke. Obviously gets me really excited when this thing starts skidding around. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's awesome to see uh, some sort of Ford sanctioned product. Because keep in mind, the mach -E hasn't gone on sale yet, right? So this has to be a manufacturer-backed effort uh, right. of some kind right. to basically make a really seemingly performance oriented version of their car which is you know will this see public streets i we don't know we have no clue i all i can say is i hope because i would like to drive my mach e like that every day right so i, I believe on job like they were doing some speculating they were saying either it's like a it's a ford vehicle for like a ford racing program or they, uh, there's another outfit uh, rtr or something like that uh, that works in conjunction with ford and has their own racing uh, program and actually i think that's that's owned by vince uh what's that guy's name vince kyle yeah von von, von. yeah von Vaughn, Vaughn, part right. of it. Yep. which who does like a ken block uh, i think i'm not sure maybe i know ken block better who does like a lot of uh jim jim kind of videos like crazy driving lots of donuts the videos and it could be it could be a ken block thing we don't know or we can't say <laughs> for sure what, what exactly no we have no clue there. we we don't know right uh 
so yeah, so that's uh, it was pretty exciting though, and uh, uh, so the the regular mock uh, Machi has is like a four all wheel drives has two motors, and but we don't know what this has, but you know it's sure. Well, it certainly sounds different than yeah. what we've seen from Machis in the at least the original drives, and and of course in the UK they did some driving. I mean, you can hear the gear ratio, right? I mean, the motors are spinning real fast at low speed. Uh, so that's an indication of something. Uh, it's definitely got a lot of work done to it. It's definitely missing a lot of parts, uh, which means it's a you know full race car. You can see the racing seats in there. You can see a roll cage. Oh. It's definitely meant for extreme use scenario. Uh, I, I think it'll be a serious car. I just remembered. Uh, at one point, you can see actually there's somebody in the back seat of that. Yeah. I, it was, I thought which I thought was kind of odd because like in a, in a race car you you have a front seat so I don't know if that's, uh, if that's like a camera guy kind of situation to have back. Well, there you or can what? see the the in this picture here on the YouTube side you can see right you know next to the driver's head there's a little white blurb that's probably it saying Recaro or Sparco or the name of the seats but you can also see that same thing in the back so mm. this car could have four racing seats in it which is very interesting. Mm. Yeah, and not not very kind of usual for if you were stripping out a a car for the track, you'd normally just have one, maybe two seats up the front. So that's that's interesting. Um, and yeah, just the, not the sure performance. What that's about. The performance looks crazy on it. They're just you know, it's it's every every performance lovers like wet dream. Um, and go and watch the video as well. And the sound will be on and, 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 um, it's not kid friendly, I must admit. And what, so that's what was frustrating for me was it's, it, this is so exciting. Uh, Cause I love like, t this is a sign of the EV market maturing when people start to tinker with stuff and when they have a play and it's great when, when, when tuners come in and, and all those kind of more niche things happen like has happened with combustion cars forever, it's a sign that it's that the EV market is becoming more than just this little niche thing and it's becoming more mainstream and it's, it's maturing to the point where the, it's worth someone's while doing these things. And so it's so exciting. Uh, but yeah, there is a, uh, there is a, a, a commentary uh, as, as the, the, the person filming it is mentions a few things um, uh, as, as they're watching it. Like, oh my goodness, what's this? Um, <laughs> he's, just not, breathing. he's just not a good enough actor to pull it off, unfortunately. So that that riled me. So uh, so yeah. that, and then he kind of uh, appears to get rumbled at the end and runs away. Um, and uh, and <laughs> what well, he does, I mean, um, it's it's just not realistic, unfortunately. Well, it's so also, uh, Tom and I, you know, Tom, you know the facility. Obviously, I'm there every day. You're not walking in there. No. Like, you're in the no. middle of nowhere. It's not like we don't have yeah. spectators that yeah. come through. So, yeah. I, I, I don't see how they could have, uh, how someone could have filmed this. Yeah, and, it's and, sadly and, not and real. And knowing your track, Kyle, if I were sneaking in there, and I mean, obviously, people could trek through, you know, a half a mile of woods to get to, get to it. I don't think that's where I would set up, even though, I mean, that is that little square portion of the, of the extended asphalt is where more testing would be. There's no like easy way to get out of there because it's right by the entrance and everything. You know, I, I would have, you know, hung out on the other side of the track and recorded cars driving around and, you know, kind right of up on the hill the mm. and no one would have seen me, but where he, what, where he is, that's, you know, that's like they just let him out and he walked through like six feet of trees and stood there. Uh, he didn't come in from the other way. No way. That's the, the, this is a setup as, as every, it's, it's, it's obvious. If you read the comments on Jalopnik, you know, everybody was like, oh, come on. Like you couldn't, <laughs> you couldn't do a better job than that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's a shame because when something as exciting as this makes its way onto the Internet, it deserves to be done uh, really well, and it deserves, you know, either a, you know, either a famous driver or just someone uh, presenting it to the world for the first time. It can still be kept under wraps, and and so whoever this is, obviously, it's it's it is in a way connected with Ford because you have to be able to get the car to, right. to strip it out. So whatever, so whether it is, uh, you know, whether it's straight up Ford or whether it's someone who works with them, it, it, there could have been such an amazing presentation of this, which would have got. Firstly, a lot more publicity than than a, a leak, and and also done it in a really a cool way that would have got those people, especially you know I think a lot about those 
petrol heads that still look at EVs as a curiosity. Look, we know differently, and you watching, you know differently, but there's a huge part of the internet out there uh, that still think that EVs are, are these little kind of golf carts, and it, it, it would have just been another cool, like all like the... The drag runs that we see, uh, it would have been another cool little way just to demonstrate how amazing electric power is. And they they not only missed the opportunity, they also blew it by making this so-called wow. shot through the trees. So that was my frustration, but I, I would love to see it properly now present. Now it's out there. Yeah. I would love it to be properly presented and have someone walk around it, you know, as much as they can. If it's secret. Just show as much as they can about it, because I'm I'm pumped about seeing more about this. Yeah, I understand. There's a lot lot going on here, so it's going to be really interesting when they do actually roll uh, footage that you know show us what is inside and and what it can do, and with actually the the proper bodywork all in place like it's supposed to be and everything. But uh, we should move on. And, they absolutely oh. will. They're already showing us that they want to us to know about this car and talk right. about it. So it's not like this is super secret and we're never going to hear about it and it's just going to go away. You know, right. I think we'll, we're going to get a proper video now, um, especially, agree. you know, they, they're, they're reading the comments and seeing like people are like, give me a break, you know, you, you, you know, and they'll probably watch this podcast and be like, all right, you know, we, we tried something. It didn't work. Now let's do it right and show them what we're doing. So, I mean, it might not happen next week, but I think we're, we're going to we're going to get to see. We haven't seen the last of this vehicle. Yeah, I I'd mean, rather some- have really good mark, uh, really good engineering, and very poor marketing than really good marketing and <laughs> yeah. really poor engineering. Yeah. 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 So as long That's as it's good. engineered well, and just throw That's look, good. throw some black cloth over the dash, or throw some black cloth over um, if there's any control electronics that would give it something away in a video. We don't need to see everything, so we can, just want to see what it's like up close. Yeah, yeah, it can right. be done, and, and I'm sure that I hope they do. Hope they do. Okay. So, uh, and it, it, yeah, definitely uh, look that up and so take a listen to how, what this car sounds like. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Um, so moving on, uh, Tesla Cybertruck reservations have opened up in China. <laughs> Will people buy it there? I mean, it's already got a ton of reservations. I, I think the uh, estimates are around like seven, six hundred, seven hundred thousand. You know, reservations, low cost reservations. So some of those could fall through. But still, but China's a huge country. Is this, you know, I'm, I'm on the fence. I don't know. Is he, it could either go like crazy nuts as far as like popularity or it could be. Well, you know. Tom is our resident uh, expert on China. And Tom, do you picture just people flying through traffic in one of these pushing cars out of the way? Because this is how I imagine it would go in dense <laughs> China traffic. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't know if I saw a single full size pickup truck in my four or five times in China. Um, <laughs> they've got these crazy like makeshift trucks that they've kind of built with motors outside the back and pulleys and everything, <laughs> like hauling bales of hay and whatnot. But like, it's not a pickup truck market. It's not a large vehicle market. I mean, they do like their SUVs. Uh, that's becoming more popular, especially, you know, the more wealthy people. But um, I don't know. Uh, I was really thinking about this and, and wondering how I was going to, you know, frame that. I, my, my instinct is to say, no, this is not a vehicle made for China. But then I don't know that they do love Tesla in China. And, you know, I, you know, it's, it's hard. They love to, to stand it's out to be as popular as in the U S will they sell some of them? Yeah. Um, but I don't see this being a, a big, uh, you know, bit moving, you know, largely in, in the Chinese market, just not the right vehicle for China. Um, no. But, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Tesla just keeps proving everybody wrong. Every time we say, oh, this isn't going to work, that's not going to work. <laughs> it does. So um, I'm, I'm really interested to see how that works out. I, I can't see this. I can't see these on the, just in the, you know, inching away in the, the streets of Shanghai, I, you know, so, Street light, street, street light, you know. Sp- speaking of the streets of Shanghai, for those of, for those of us who haven't been to China, um, I, I mean, I've seen videos of China and stuff, and a lot they have a lot of big boulevards. Do they have also have a, like a lot of small roads and things too, where this would be kind of difficult? You know, the, most of the cities have have decent size roads. Um, they're they're wider than like European cities, right. um, but they're just so jam packed and. Uh, it, it's almost as if they 
a lot of the streets, they didn't count for parking, but people parked there anyway. So half the tires are up on the sidewalk and, you know, it's just it's super tight. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't think this is the right vehicle for that, for that market. Um, but I'm sure they'll sell some of them, but it won't be anything like um, U S you know, or, you know, I can't, I can't imagine it, but like I said, I, I don't know. I, I, I almost should just stay away from predicting Tesla because right. it, it doesn't conform to the norms of reality, Tesla. And, uh, you know, um, well, that, who knows? <laughs> well, that's, that's reassuring because for me, I, you know, I think this is, it's really, for most people, it's too much vehicle. And I, a lot of people are, are buying it because it's got, you know, offers super utility and performance and it, the price point isn't so bad. But really, it's it's a lot of vehicle. And it seems like, a, you know, that all that takes extra batteries and extra energy to run. And from an environmental standpoint, it's, it's, you know, we really don't need millions and millions of cyber trucks taking over the, uh, you know, when the model three, the model, I mean, if it's just to stay with the Tesla brand, you know, with, with those vehicles, I just, uh, I think it would have a, a smaller environmental footprint. Yeah. I, I agree to that point, but also don't forget they're replacing these, hopefully they're replacing these giant oh, yeah. five pickup trucks, which are no, aren't smaller than this. And, and, and consume a lot more energy and, right. and, and produce a lot more uh, greenhouse gases and pollution. So in that regard, it's not like, you know, people are getting out of a golf and into a cyber truck, you know, um, well, maybe someone maybe. will do that. There's going to be some of that, but the vast majority, I think, you know, that that's not going to be the case. Um, well, that, but I think that, it's going to be the first pickup truck that sways normal car buyers up to the truck market for like you had mentioned a very small subset of people but there's a lot of people now that would never drive an f-150 or a ram 1500 but want to buy a cyber truck i've seen a lot of that online yeah they, they need to see it first because however big you think the cyber truck is it's bigger <laughs> i mean it's it's it won't work here it, it won't it won't oh, it absolutely no. won't work here it's you just little, it's, kind of, you'd have to pull off the road so that other cars go by those back of the roads Honestly, and that's like, as Tom was saying with China and, uh, and it's just depends how big it, you know, kind of funny story. I, I was, I came over to Miami last year to see our friends at my EV headquarters and, uh, and they'd, they'd got a, a model X lined up for me to drive for the few days that I'd, I'd flown in to see them. And my first thought was, Oh God, really? It's, that's such a big car. And then I realized I'm in America and actually the model X is tiny because I had these not a big car. Tr- yeah. It's and it's like over here at model when you see one, it's imposing. And yet when I was in Miami driving around, there's these massive trucks that aren't even that don't even exist in, in the UK market uh, going past me. And I actually felt in a normal in a model X, I just kind of felt normal sized car. And you, you know, your parking spaces are bigger. They're de- like s- s- the, the, the car parks here are still the lines were painted on the floor. You know, forty years ago, when you know minis were really mini, you know, <laughs> yeah, even you had in a normal ca- and buggies behind, yeah, them. right. So <laughs> even in a, on, you know, in a normal sized car, when you go to a car park and you sort of be careful how you open the door and you inch it open and don't scratch the car next to me, let alone a Model X, you're not getting out of that thing. Cybertruck, no way, absolutely no way. So I think people need to see it and uh, at least just see it in the metal at least once, please, before you buy one. Right on. <laughs> Hey, so, so sticking with Tesla, uh, let's talk about Elon Musk says that Tesla is very close to level five self-driving technology. Autopilot is about to be to be a real, th- you know, thing. Except level five, you know, level five to me is like no steering wheel, right? It does right, everything. Think, you just right. get in. Well, it's S A E. Time. Oh, look! It is. It, it's that time of year when Elon. <laughs> look at that. Regular as clockwork. <laughs> It's that time of year when he predicts full self-driving by the end of the year. Future yeah. complete. He's been doing right. it for the last four years. Right. Yeah. I love him. I love him. Yeah. It's not coming. We should I just throw him. a party every year when it starts. We'll we'll have a celebration. I mean, it, uh, it has it has made a lot of improvements. There's been a lot of improvements in 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 this autopilot and the and the full self-driving. Well, I hate that that term. That term's for it. silly. It is because it's not. I, you know, as much as until you can actually, you know, it actually does it. You know, until you can jump right. in and say, "Car, take me to the bar," you know. Yeah, it, it's not well, full it, self driving. Yeah, I agree. I, um, Tom, do you have the the full self driving package on your car? No way. I'm so not I until it's ready. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, actually, my mom's car has it. So I, while I was down here doing those tests, I was able because I wasn't going to spend six, seven, eight thousand dollars on my car for lane changes, which right. is really the only useful thing out of that package. Um, but I was able to play around with it uh, driving my mom's car. I put about eight hundred thousand miles on it this week, just driving back and forth to Miami and around town. And it is uh, really actually interesting. It will stop it at red lights now. So I approach a red light and it comes to a stop. Uh, we actually broke that story on out of spec. That's a whole nother long story. Uh, but I got to try it for the first time in a production car and non, it's still beta, but not pre-release. And it's awesome. It just comes to a stop at the light. When it goes green, you confirm it and it goes forwards. Uh, the problem with autopilot is it's still, uh, well, there's two different problems that I find with it. One, it lulls you into a sense of false security because it's so good 98% of the time that the one time that it messes up, you're not ready to take over potentially. Um, and it also doesn't monitor driver behavior through a, a really good DMS driver monitoring system. And, uh, you know, a torque sensor in a steering wheel is not enough for me to communicate that I am looking forwards it, all it says you know, i mean i could be looking at the dogs behind me touch the wheel and clear the message right uh so with with super cruise and now copilot 360 from ford they will have eye tracking which is the first iteration of really good uh, uh dms and, and bmw uses this too so tesla is very far behind with autopilot being safe i feel uh but it is very feature rich i just really hope normal people that take delivery of their car with contactless delivery understand the limitations of the system because that's when it gets dangerous. Exactly. And that is a problem. As we've seen, people don't understand the limits or they, you know, and, and, you know, I don't blame the people as much as Tesla, because as you said, Kyle, the, the car is flawless 98 or 99 percent of the time or 99.5 whatever it is it works great but it just takes that one point that one time in a thousand or ten thousand or whatever it is and you're in some serious trouble I, as i've mentioned here in the podcast before i've had two or th i think two possibly three incidences where i'm certain the car would have my car when i was on autopilot would have driven me into like a concrete barrier if i didn't take over and um you know, it's, it, it, it works great until it doesn't. And, uh, you know, it's, it's driver assist features. It's not autopilot, you know, it's not full self-driving. Um, and that, that, you know, I've, I've been pretty consistent with this, with Tesla, you know, beating them up on this. Um, I love it on mine. It works great until it doesn't use it, but you, you have to understand that it has its limitations and there should be a better driver monitoring system, like Kyle mentions, rather than just, you know, the, the, the torque sensor where, you know, people know they just hang a weight or something on the steering wheel and they, they pick up a damn book or, 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 you know, start texting people. And, uh, you know, that's why we see these horrific crashes every now and then some of them are caught on video, um, where, you know, a, a model, a Tesla will just drive into the back of a, of a park truck or a concrete barrier. Um, you know, it's very difficult for it to recognize by the end of the year is just, or he didn't say by the end of the year this time, I think. I think he just said very close and yeah, very close, very I guess. You know, Elon's very close might be we're only three or four years away. But a lot of people look at very close like, oh, I better run out and b buy it now because it's it's coming. And uh, right. Or let me hit the software update button until it arrives on my car. Yeah, just <laughs> stand there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's not. We're not going to have level five autonomy for year for a few years i mean technically uh, yeah. that means no steering wheel so uh, i really I, I think he should have said level four because that's you know basically level five but with, with the controls same. yeah yeah it's just but, but with human control well, we're not going to have level four for a while then i'll recall. right well they're doing a whole rewrite of of the whole of all the software all the codes getting a total rewrite so that should help with some improvements yeah. Yeah. So, it's just it's yeah. Tesla is way too bullish on this this driving system, and and it there's nothing inherently wrong with the system. The system is great. Right. It is just how they communicate the use of the system to the people who drive the car. Right. A lot, and a lot of people argue it is it is better than what is offered by the uh, Super Cruise from GM or or the Ford system. 
or even the BMW system. But you know, it all it all depends a lot. I mean, yeah, it is Tesla owners one of Tesla owners you know top favorite features. So you know, it's not it's not garbage, obviously. But you know, there's still issues. I use it all the time. Yeah, as do I. Right on. All right. So real quickly, while we're on the model, the Tesla, uh, we saw a Model Y and a Ford Mustang Mach-E side by side for the first time this week, and that was kind of interesting to see. You know, because this this is uh, this is Ford's you know big, really their first big electric vehicle, and you know they really need to hit a home run with this because they don't have a. I don't think they have a really deep portfolio of vehicles coming. Yeah, so this has to, be, and this has to be a hit for them. And looking at them side by side, do you have? A, yeah, can you f- dig that up there, Martin? We can see them. Yeah, let me bring that up. There's, uh, there's a better picture. There's a video. There's a better picture online that was uh, the part of the original, the original Twitter post. So let me okay. show you that. And that's Where? a better. That's uh, a still is always a, a, a. You can actually stare at it for a little bit longer. But right. yeah, it's interesting seeing the two next to each other. Yeah, uh, and now we're looking at the back view, and I got to say, I really I prefer the Maki look from the back end. Well, there's nothing wrong with with the Tesla, but then yeah, when they put fine. it next when they put it next to the Mark E, I was like, oh, that looks nice. Right. Like there's there's some yeah. angles that I still don't get the the you know the Mac E. There's some shots that they issue that it just I don't think it looks terrible in. Um, but then when you see real world photos of it. Uh, there's something about the studio shots that Ford use. It just, it, I don't know, it, it looks soft and bulbous. But then you see that, and you go, that's so cool. Right. One yeah, of my absolutely. favorite things that Ford did was if you can see the side profile of the car, you can see it here. The the paint droops down to make it look like it has a sloping rear roof line. But the uh, actual roof is painted black and continues flat back. So it gives the sense of your the, the kind of sporty SUV things that you guys like but it retains the ability to haul the dogs. So it's a really nice compromise between the two. I think they did a good job. Uh, and I agree, Martin, I think it looks better in real world shots than whatever they're doing in the studio. Yeah. I always have some problems with, with the front end of the mach I don't know if we have a shot of the front end there, just uh, where the grill is when they have the same color body color and the big insert over the grill. I think the GT version doesn't have the body color there. I, I think it looks better. I think that's it. Actually, it's that front end uh, yeah. where it's it's it just there's shots of it that don't look right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but yeah, let me. I'll try and find some. I'll try and find some pictures. So is that the is that the one where it's all the it same color? There. Yeah, yeah. But it looks good there to me this time. But every sometimes yeah. it not so much. You know, that's interesting. Just if you're ordering one, don't order those wheels. Those wheels are not good. <laughs> <laughs> Wheel opinions. Okay. All right, so let's uh, move on a little bit. Um, see, the, the Toyota RAV4 Prime was uh, in the head, head, headlines again this week, and uh, we've seen some first drive reviews, and I don't know if you've had a chance to look at those, but uh, I think that actually the big story with this is that uh, we're seeing like massive markups from dealers uh, for the RAV4 Prime, like $10,000. Who would have known that a RAV4 would draw lines out the door? But this is such a huge problem. We spoke about it on the last show too. People want electrified vehicles. This is proof of it. So every, you know, Toyota made a really solid, good plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Uh, I'm going to get one to drive fairly soon. We're going to produce a lot of content for our viewers on it. It's going to be really great. I had to push all the cars back because of this trip. Um, But we're going to go and we're going to have fun. It is the fastest accelerating Toyota other than the Supra. And so then Toyota just like they all this great stuff. And they're like, sorry, we're not going to make any. And so then dealers are going to capitalize on that and jack up the prices. Right. A lot of this is because supply is limited, right? Exactly. They're not making enough. Man, it seems like a, uh, what it's like, we can't get like one company to do everything right. You know, it's like either mediocre engineering or like in this case, not no production with the engineering. Well, I, I think Polestar down. has got it actually. Okay. I, I think they, I can't find any fault in Polestar's thing so far. Well, so I don't have this on the story list this week, but we did see the first, I think it's the first Polestar 2 actually driving, re- first driver reviews. 
Uh, right. and, and they were in England actually too because the steering wheel's on the wrong side of the car. But uh, <laughs> or the I, correct I, side. I, I, the I think side. I think you mean the right side of the car. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let you off that one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the, the the one video I saw that actually I, I looked at a couple of them, and um, and we had that up on Inside EVs. If you just type in Polestar Two, you should be able to find that. And he, the one I saw, he, he does you know pretty much direct comparison to Model Three, and you know it. Model Three kind of by the numbers, it doesn't really match the Model Three. It's like heavier, it's slower, um, but man. But you don't I, drive cars on paper, right? That's right? true. You drive them on pavement. That's true. And uh, so I, I'm going to go and drive this in August, uh, okay? Which is the earliest opportunity U.S. journalists have to drive it, and okay. we're going to make a lot of videos and cool stuff. But after spending time with it in person not moving. I think it's beautiful. I think the tech's really good with the Android snappy system. I think it's got fair range, fair charging speeds. Uh, it all seems good to me. And you guys know I'm a Volvo fan and this is part of that family. So right. I, I, I'm all about it. And it's got a lift back on the back. So you have a little bit more, maybe more trunk space in the back than the it's Model It's like a mid lift. It's uh, it's not a full hatch, unfortunately. Okay. So it's um, something where we would not be able to fit our dogs into. So if we were to get one of this family of vehicle, which is a serious you know, consideration at this right. point for Alyssa, uh, it's going to have to be XC40 recharge instead of the Polestar 2. But it's the same thing underneath, basically. Yeah, That's true. Yeah. They're on the same platform. And the XC40, I've seen that one. I haven't seen actually the Polestar 2 in person, but I have seen the XC40 recharge. And, you know, that was nice. The materials and the interior, you know, it's like, yeah, I, I I prefer it over over the Tesla as far as like the material, the touch, just the feel. I it's a nicer like the, place to spend time. I do like the the I do like that Spartan design that Tesla uses, but I think the materials could use a bit of an upgrade here and there. You know, it's just mm. it just a, it wouldn't take a whole lot, a whole lot to really improve that experience. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's nice inside, and it's it's well engineered. The cars they gave to the press over here this week were the uh, it was actually it was. Um, press were invited to a private test track um so they were able to to get some performance out of it but they were only showing off the polestar 2 with the five thousand pound uh performance pack added which gives you the o-lines dampers the the brembo brakes uh everything is like the seat belts are the same color as the brake Gold calipers. seat belts that is the best thing <laughs> ever <laughs> yes it looks it's very cool so they were driving the performance one which adds five okay. grand uh, but again, it splits over here. Uh, I mentioned earlier, it does split the Model Three. Right, so it's, it's it's more expensive than Model Three, but and it, but it, you know it's cheaper than well, the but, performance Model Three, but it's not yeah, as so fast. cheaper but significantly by by like six or seven grand cheaper than the Model Three performance. Right, um, and it's actually it's only a little more expensive because we get um, three thousand pounds off of cars as a government grant. Right. Um, and then by the time and and Tesla publish their prices online with it already taken off and Polestar don't, and so actually, don't get me started on on consumer I'm, education and awareness of EVs. Everyone's doing it differently. But actually, if you take that off of the headline price of Polestar, you're not far off a Model Three dual motor um, long range. So and then the performance is the same. You get more mileage out of a Tesla um, by yeah. about fifty miles, but right. Nor to sixty is basically the same. Oh, really? For the long mm -hmm. range? Yeah, which is uh, four point four, I think, in the UK, um, and I think the Polestar two is four point seven. I think. Mm. Okay, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's basically the same. It's yeah, I think that, you know. It's just at that point, it's it's preference. Obviously, Tesla will sell ten Model threes for every mm. Polestar two, yeah. but it's uh, you know, if you have a Tesla in the garage already, or you don't really need to rely on the supercharger network because as I understand it, Martin, your charging infrastructure is even worse than ours away from the Tesla uh, the UK, experience. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, at that point, if you're comfortable with that or you just want to drive around town, the Polestar is going to set you apart from everyone else. It's true. And it's, and it's a great looking vehicle too. I, I mean, I, I prefer the looks of it over the Model 3 as well. And you I, can't I, just so. count how much... The supercharging network um, yeah. adds value to the vehicles, though, because especially first-time EV buyers, you know, 
they're so concerned about range anxiety and about being stranded much more so than what they really need to be. But Hey, we're human. And that's, you know, we have fears, we fear the unknown and this is unknown to most people, you know, having that supercharger network, uh, you know, I don't know if it's as robust uh, in the UK, Martin, as it is here, but we can, you know, Kyle and I can drive anywhere and just, it's, it's not an issue. You don't even have to think about it. We can drive wherever we want to go and there's always superchargers. And um, it's just not the case with any other vehicle. Um, I mean, you know, take for instance, my, I was talking about the I3 uh, that I, you know, had the, the charging problem with on the Electrify America with, you know, where it just shut off and it didn't charge. That just right. doesn't happen with right. Tesla. You just pull in, plug in, and it charges the darn car and 15, 20 minutes, you're out of there. And, uh, you know, I it's think amazing that's amazing integration. I, I think sometimes we don't, uh, being so into electric vehicles and, 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 and EVs and charging, I think we might not be able to look at it from the perspective of a first time buyer that's super concerned about being able to charge the thing. And uh, Tesla has such an advantage. And I'm, that's, uh, that's absolutely part of the reason why they sell so many more cars than any other electric yeah. vehicle manufacturer. You're a hundred percent correct. We're, um, we're, we're fine for superchargers over here. And actually I watch from a distance at the, you know, the regular articles about a uh, holiday season or Thanksgiving queues at superchargers, maybe on the West coast. I've yes. never seen, I've never seen a queue, at, at any supercharger in the UK because they always build them in blocks of eight, 10 or 12. And there's not as many cars over here. So I've never seen a queue. I've, I, if I see them sharing a stall, uh, I look at them and go, oh, man, only half the power. Uh, you yeah. know, so <laughs> I rarely see them sharing. So uh, and that is, you know, that I was talking to a friend earlier today who's, um, uh, be careful what I say, but uh, who's doing some interesting things in energy and the conversation. Uh, and as you know, Tesla entering the UK energy market, of which he knows a fair bit about. Uh, and, and the conversation was around that walled garden. And actually, can you imagine when Tesla will sell you the car, will look after your charging, and will supply you your home energy supply as well, so that it's all just seamless. There's just one bill. And right. that's going to be you know, got a, a battery pack, the first Tesla uh, mega pack is, is now in the UK, um, which is exciting. So they're now storing energy and selling it back to the grid using mega packs for the first time. Nice. And if they can if they can do something funky with that 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. expensive bit of the day, uh, uh, they're going to be absolutely quids in when it comes to. But as you say, it's that it's that ecosystem or walled garden. Once you're inside it, I don't know anybody who's owned a Tesla who's sold one and gone back to a different brand. There must be there must be someone there's, somewhere. Yeah, there's some. There, there's, there's a few. But I, I like don't it. know personally. Anyone I talk to a lot of EV drivers. Anyone who's owned a Tesla, they might change with another Tesla, mm -hmm. but no one's ever gone back to gas, and no one's ever gone to a different brand of EV. And it's just because it it just works. It's like oh, it's like paying more to get an Apple iPhone. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, works. It, it was a nice map. You, you had the uh, the Tesla map of the supercharger network through. Yeah, the, that's over here. The UK and, I, there. and there's still lots coming already. Oh, and there's there's, t there's tons on the way. There's not many V. There's any uh, in this country. There's only one V3. Um, okay. But just if you're doing European trips, right? It's just it just yeah. rather than having a wallet full of RFID cards and apps and all that kind of stuff. If I'm driving, if I'm going to do a thousand miles down to Italy or Spain, go find some sunshine. It's just it just works, and it's you know it is it's the unique thing. Yeah. Very nice. So speaking of uh, long range and things, we we'll would sort of wrap up pretty soon here, but I wanted to hit these, uh, a pile of high-end uh, plug-in hybrids uh, came in, uh, released some range figures this week. So I thought we'd run through them real quick. Uh, most, probably the most interesting one here, well, maybe not most interesting, but most uh, available here is the Lincoln Avi Aviator uh, FEV. It's uh, been rated at 21 miles of EPA electric range, which is not great, but it's a huge, it's a stonking big SUV. And so, that, you know, that's something that's Ford's moving or Lincoln is, you know, moving towards electrification. And it's a, you know, it's a nice looking vehicle. So it's nice that, you know, people in this, in this segment in the market for this kind of vehicle can now 
get a plug. And, you know, for a lot of people, 20, 20 miles, yeah, I, that should, hmm, it'll, it'll cover, I guess the average is like more closer to 30 miles a day, the average person drives. So, well, you can the, charge at work too, midday. Yeah, so, you, yeah. you go from home, plug into a wall outlet in your parking garage, and come back. But I think the big thing that Lincoln's doing, which is similar to Geely's approach, or like Volvo, for example, with plug in hybrids, is their top trim, the fastest one, is the plug in hybrid version. Uh, uh, that's good. That's like 600 foot pounds of torque and 400 and something horsepower. Like, this is not a slow car. So right. I think that I'd, and you know, I recently had a plug-in hybrid on test that had this approach. It was the V60 Polestar. And it was great because uh, I could cruise around in electric if I wanted to, but anytime you put your foot down, I mean that they just rock it off because uh, you get the full turbocharged engine plus the electric boost. And it really makes it fun to drive around the city. Yeah. On the inside EV article, I, I saw the, the output numbers so like, were crazy high. I forget what they were right off the top of my head, but you know, all kinds of power, but, but I'm not really familiar with the, the gas version. So I didn't know how it compared, but I guess it's, it's, it's the fastest, it's the best. And yep. when it comes to plug-in hybrids, but, 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 oh, there this, we go. This is the new standard. Come on. Right. Let's yeah, get there. It's gotta have 60 miles is the new standard. I agree. Yeah. Now, look, Mercedes do this already with the GLD 350 okay. diesel, you know, nasty. But in this, there'll be a petrol engine in this. And th this is the new, we've got to get there as quick as possible. If you're going to so, make plug-in plug hybrids, make them with 100 Ks of range, 62 miles. And, you know, you're off to the races then. So for those of you not watching the video right now, we're looking at the Mercedes-Benz uh, new S-Class plug-in hybrid in, in camouflage. And it's, it's yeah, said to have 62 miles of all electric range or 100 kilometers of all electric range, which is fabulous. I mean, when Tom and I get to test this. We will have a nice week of very right. luxurious <laughs> comfort driving with massaging seats. You'll Look be so chill on that Friday show. You'll be so chilled out. You guys are going to be like, yeah, fine. <laughs> you have this lined up already or is this or is this? No, but we'll get one to test, I'm sure, at some point. Okay. Yeah. okay. And that's that's the next generation. That, I, don't, I don't think we're going to get this one anytime soon. Right. Uh, and it, it's it's interesting. If, if you recall, we talked about this a couple weeks ago when I had the, um, uh, the X3 plug-in hybrid. BMW also announced that the next generation of all of their plug-in hybrids is going to have a minimum of the 100 kilometers, you know, 62 miles of plug-in electric range. So now... Mercedes comes out with their first like next generation and it's exactly what BMW said. So with, with any luck, that's going to be the new standard. And, uh, you know, the next generation plug-in hybrids are going to be, you know, have, have really good electric range. Cause as you can see now, all the ones that are not all, but the vast majority, especially from the German manufacturers all have right around 20 miles of EPA rated range. Right. Which, you know, it, it works for a lot of people right now that wouldn't necessarily be in a in, in a plug-in hybrid. Uh, I mean, in an electric vehicle, mm, uh, it right. works. I, I liked my time with the with the with the uh, X3 plug-in hybrid. Um, you know, I I averaged I think somewhere close to sixty miles per gallon. But um, for the next generation, when we're talking 2022, 2023, right. the vehicles. I mean, if you have a plug-in hybrid, it's got to have. Uh, hundred kilometers of, of, of electric range. I, in my opinion, it's just, there's no excuse not to at that point. This is basically triple what they're offering now. I, we see we have the, the 2020 Mercedes Benz GLC 350 E is rated at 22 miles of EPA electric range. The yep. 2020 Mercedes Benz, uh, S 560 E 18 miles of all electric range. The land Land Rover Range Rover gets uh, plug in hybrid gets 19 miles. So yeah, 60 miles is like a breakthrough. It's better than the uh, Clarity uh, plug-in hybrid and it's better than the, the Volt. Yeah. It's, would you, so would you get, so now, hmm, would you, do you get a, like a 60 mile plug-in hybrid or do you get a, like a, a 300, 400 mile all electric, you, you know, get super electric. sedan? Yeah. Yeah. No comparison. What about the, so Mercedes will have the, do you know when the, so Mercedes is a uh, all electric sedan is the EQS and it's yeah. a very streamlined, nice looking sedan. Mm -hmm. And is it going to come out around the same, is that 2022? Or is that a little bit later? I believe it's 2022. I actually am one of the few people that drove their concept. That's right. Um, which was a pretty interesting experience. It was like a one-off. So 
nothing like I, I wasn't even allowed to close the door when I got in it to drive it, you know, and it had the funky steering wheel that was like a video game, you know, like one quarter steering right. wheel, which they look really cool, but you cannot drive a vehicle with that. Like turning around, I was like, my hand was getting stuck in it and everything. And I, I couldn't even make a turn, but um, yeah, that, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to, to that vehicle. I think it's going to be, I think, I mean, that's Mercedes is like, BMW i4, you know, I mean, that's going to be their first look, look at what we can do, you know, um, and uh, hopefully it won't this point. Yeah, well, they, they already have the EQC crossover, which is, uh, I think they had a, a, a shareholder, I think they have like a half percent, own half percent of, of Daimler, it was complaining about the EQC being boring and, and whatever, but, you know, I think it's, it's okay for a first effort, you know, it, it's not selling like but it should be interesting i think to see how this uh the tension between all electric and plug-in hybrids goes over time i believe plug-in hybrids have been doing pretty good as an, as all plugins have been doing in europe this year and, and so they have more life i think plug-in hybrids have than people have expected but it should be interesting to see as all electrics improve and as charging infrastructure improves how that continues to play out any thoughts on this martin we want to move on. Uh, you know what? I, I know we've gone long already. Yeah. Uh, and I hold myself entirely responsible for that. Okay. <laughs> okay so uh, let's wrap it up real quick. Uh, I just want to say that also Lucid Motors is opening up 20 sales and service locations around uh, the country by the end of next year. So that's something to look forward to. And we'll see more about the Lucid era coming up this year. It's a pretty exciting vehicle. A sedan, as we mentioned before. Very and nice stores, by the way. Just not to keep us going, but in no. these pictures, they're beautiful. How yes, nice yeah, they yeah. Check out those images on on Inside EVs. And uh, real quick before we else we go, oh, there's a new scooter racing series coming. <laughs> so if you haven't, that sounds a little bit crazy. Nothing like nothing to get excited about until you see the video that produces like computer generated uh, image video. But it looks, you know, like Tron, like sort of, you know, it's a stand up scooters like you can rent, but. 60 mile an hour stand up scooters with, uh, yeah, like those Tron visuals, like day glow and matching outfits. I, I like the matching outfits part in the helmet. It kind of looks all futuristic and fun. And it's got some, uh, it's got some big names behind it. Uh, Lucas Degrassi, who, uh, who races in, in Formula E, he's, uh, involved with that as well as Alexander Wirtz, who is a Formula One driver. Yeah. So that's something to look forward to. There'll be more about the coming up. More are coming up about that over the next year. If it happens, racing series are kind of notorious for, you know, big plans and then kind of falling through at the end. We've seen like a number of different racing series uh, not really pan out. But anyway, that brings us to the end of our show. And I'd like to thank you all for joining us. If you have any comments about any of uh, the topics on today's show, you can comment on the Inside EVs podcast post, uh, the YouTube comment section, of course, or on the Inside EVs forum podcast thread. And don't forget, you can find and follow our panelists on Twitter. Uh, Tom is at Tomalog. Uh, Martin is at EV News Daily. Uh, Kyle is at Out of Spec. And I'm at Dominic underscore Y. So click subscribe and tap that bell icon for notifications and we'll see you all next week. Have a wonderful week.